Which you guys got another video here for you at the end of Windows 10. What does the end of free support for Windows 10 mean to you, the user? Well, computers running software will work perfectly fine, but steadily become more vulnerable over time to malware and viruses and ransomware and all of these other nasty things on the internet because the operating system will not be patched and supported by Microsoft anymore. So that means from Tuesday, that was yesterday, Microsoft will no longer offer free support as a standard for Windows 10. Its operating system was used by millions of computers and laptops around the world. So what's going to be happening to Windows 10? Well, after October 14th, 2025, Microsoft will no longer provide any standard free uh, software updates, security fixes or patches or any technical assistance to Windows 10 PCs. So is it safe to continue to use Windows 10? For the time being, yes, it's going to be perfectly fine. But over the course of time, it will become more vulnerable to viruses and malware. And as bugs are not being fixed or patched or security holes are not being patched, it will become very vulnerable. Now, of course, Microsoft say that you should use a more stable updated operating system like Windows 11 and upgrade to Windows 11 if your current system meets the requirements. Windows 10 ISOs will be pulled from their website, so you won't be able to re-download those. Also, you'll find the updates will still work when you reinstall Windows, but only up until the point when it ended. And these might become very slow because Microsoft are not worried about an obsolete operating system anymore. And this is the big problem. But as of now, everything is working perfectly fine. So what is the risk if you don't uh, update Windows and you continue to use it? Well, software manufacturers eventually will stop supporting older versions of Windows 10, and it will basically become vulnerable to hackers and also make it very vulnerable if you're doing online banking or any shopping online or any things like that. So it really isn't a good option to continue to use Windows 10 without any security updates or patches. So once you're fully updated, you will see something looking like this. Your version of Windows has reached the end of support. That means you will not receive any more updates through this method if you have an extended support, which was the extended support program that Microsoft provided, the ESU program, and you have to sign up for it. You have to be signed into Microsoft account to be able to get the enrollment page up so you can enroll. And basically, once you've done that, you will get one more year. A lot of people are hoping that it's going to continue after that, but Microsoft have clearly stated it's just one year only, and that is it. But the end of mainstream support from Microsoft for Windows 10 has ended, so you are not going to be able to get any more mainstream support. This is extended support for security updates only. And you can see right here, uh, Microsoft are pushing you to go to Windows 11. And they were talking about, you know, comparing the differences between Windows 11 and Windows 10 and some of the options you may have available. Obviously, there's millions of people that have got really old systems that aren't compatible for Windows 11. And they are being either told to buy a brand new computer. It's that simple. Now, it's been posted on Witch's website about uh, 5 million British computers are planning to continue to use their device running their software because this is the big problem. A lot of people have proprietary software that needs Windows 10 to run and it just doesn't work on Windows 11. So extending is all they can do. So you can choose which way you want to enroll. You can either back up your settings, PC settings to Microsoft. You can redeem Microsoft reward points or you've got a one-time purchase of $30. If you live in the UK and other countries in the EEA, you'll get it for free. But there is a catch. As you can see right here on their blog post, some people were saying there's no information about the 60 days. It says right here, if you do not continue to sign into your PC with your Microsoft account, the ESU updates will discontinue from your device after a period of up to 60 days. And it says here, if the ESU updates have been discontinued for failing to sign into your Microsoft account, you will need to then re-enroll to resume updates. So you can re-enroll at any time, but you will be signed out if you don't sign in. Users with local accounts who do not want to stay signed in to their eligible PC with a Microsoft account, you can do a one-time purchase of $30 or local currency equivalent plus 
applicable tax. And this allows you to continue to use a PC on a local account with no sign in with Microsoft account required other than to make the purchase of that initial uh, payment. So there's no way around it. You're going to have to sign into a Microsoft account to enroll for that one year extended support. And if you don't want to keep signing in every 60 days, you have to pay $30 to be able to do that. And it says it right here. Unfortunately, you're still going to have to sign in uh, to make the enrollment payment. So it's a bit of a, a pointless thing to do. So what happens after one year? If Microsoft don't continue to offer another year, you can use Zero Patch. And we've talked about this before. It's an option that you can use right now. You don't have to wait and enroll for another year, which I would advise you do because no one supports their operating system better than Microsoft. Now, Zero Patch is a microscopic uh, solution for a huge security problem. So if you need to continue to use Windows 10 because you have proprietary software or you have certain other needs, then you can use Zero Patch. And there is a free option, but I would advise you to go for probably the pro version if you're a home user. That way you get better uh, support. And this is obviously going to be for the next probably 10 years you would have support for Windows 10. Is it safe? Well, you'd have to ask people that have been using Zero Patch on other operating systems to see whether they've had any problems with it. So it says long live Windows 10. You can stay on Windows 10, no problem, by receiving microscopic uh, cures for big security holes. So this is what the claim is from Zero Patch, and it's entirely up to you whether you go down this route. But if you do want to stay on Windows 10 after, say, for instance, the one-year support ends and Microsoft don't extend it any further, then this might be your only option to stay safe on Windows 10. With other good security measures, it might be enough to keep you safe. So there is options available. Now, I do want to quickly touch on Linux because there is an option available for people that just need to surf the web, watch YouTube videos, send some emails, and do some basic computing. And obviously, Linux is going to be able to bridge that gap for you. It is a different operating system. There is a little bit of a learning curve there involved. Uh, unfortunately, there might be some software issues if you have a particular type of proprietary software that you need to run and it might not be compatible with Linux. You need to check all this out before you make the leap of faith to Linux because at the end of the day, if you need a certain piece of software and it just doesn't run on Linux, then Linux is not going to work for you if you have a piece of software that you must have for your business or something like that. Now, there is plenty of options available out there. There is a find someone to help you option. You can click on that and it will take you to a page with phone numbers, emails and all that sort of good stuff. You can install Linux yourself. I've made videos showing you how to install Linux. It's pretty straightforward and easy to do. If you're asking for my opinion on which ones you should use, I would say something like Zorin OS or Mint or you've got Ubuntu. Uh, some people will turn their nose up at Ubuntu, but it is very simple and easy to install and it's uh, supported quite a lot. You've got Pop OS as well. So let's take a look at the stack counter because there's a lot of people out there thinking that there was going to be this big shift towards Linux and there was going to be millions of people jumping over to the platform. And that simply just hasn't happened by looking at the stats here. We've got Windows stats, unknown stats. A lot of people are claiming this is Linux. It's not. It's just uh, companies, the way they collect their harvest, their data for stat counter it's not all linux i can assure you and then you've got linux here which says 3.17 percent but when you look at the graph here it will show you it goes right the way down it, everything is dropping even unknown is dropping down and unfortunately uh, for linux users it's actually dropped quite low it hasn't actually gone up it's gone down by looking at these stats osx has actually gone up by quite a bit you can see a bit of a leap there uh, and if you look at linux it says right here uh, you can see all along the line here, 3.16, that was in September. And if we look at October, you can see it's dropped right down to 2.46%. So it's actually gone down. It's been going down. And it does this all the time. It's done it, done it for many years. That line has very rarely gone up in peaks. It just literally bobbles up and down in percentage. Very rarely goes up. So I don't think tons of people have just jumped ship to Linux as Linux uh, users were claiming it's just not happened for them uh, by the looks of these graphs 
But these could change over the next coming months, but I don't expect it to be a massive big peak like a lot of people were claiming it would be. And that's not a stab at Linux itself, it's just the way things are. So let's take a look at Windows 10, because this is probably going to be the very last time you'll ever see Microsoft release an operating system like this, because things are changing at Microsoft. This was so simple and so lightweight. It wasn't like masses amount of bloat inside here. There was some bloat in here and a bit of telemetry, but not as much as there is in Windows 11. Also, you know, when you're setting this up, it was super quick to set up. You could just turn a couple of little bits off and be up and running. On Windows 11, it's much more involved. There is tons and tons of bloat inside there, unwanted applications, tons of uh, telemetry that you have to disable in the registry and things like that. A lot of people are using uh, dbloat scripts. A lot of people are using uh, Win uh, WinUtil, which is from uh, Chris Titus Tech and a bunch of other tools out there and scripts that people do use like WinToys and things like that. So you didn't have to do a lot of this with Windows 10 because it was a lot more cleaner and easier to maintain and clean up. And it happens every time. Believe it or not, when Windows 10 was first released, Everyone hated it. No one liked it at all. And that's because people just don't like change. And am I saying that people are going to suddenly like Windows 11? I don't think so, because you've only got to look at the stat counter to see the results. You can see Windows 11 is at 49.5%. Windows 10 has still got a massive market share of 40.84%. Windows 7 has actually grown. That gold line there is Windows 7. I don't know what's happened there, but, you know... Really, a lot of people haven't really taken to Windows 11. And if you look at the graph there, it's just plummeted, as well as Windows 10 has plummeted because it has now reached end of life. But people are just in limbo. They don't know what they're doing. I think this is a, a few people that are trying Windows 11 and not liking it and trying other things. They're, they're sort of not sure what they want to do right now. I think when the dust settles, you'll see roughly where Windows 11 lies and where Windows 10 lies and whether uh, Linux has grown in popularity in a few more months. We'll have to wait and see. But, you know, it's it's really strange. Normally, when operating systems get to this stage, they start be growing in popularity. And a lot of that is to do with the amount of telemetry that Windows 11 has, the, the amount of bloat that you have to remove, the amount of ads inside Windows 11. And, of course, they are now making changes so you can't uninstall certain programs like Edge and things like that. They're taking away options which used to be there available to you in the past. It's just like signing in to a Microsoft account. It, they've made it so difficult. Microsoft are consistently fighting with its users to try and block you from using a local account and making you use a Microsoft account. So gone are the days where you're going to see I do not have internet where you used to pull the ethernet cable out and just connect on windows 10 just like you can see right here super easy and it was super uh, useful for people that just wanted to set up a local account and now they can't and of course microsoft have made it even harder for people that have older hardware because of the system hardware requirements like tpm 2.0 and things like that and it's made it difficult they've put a bunch of cpus on the band list where you can't upgrade so yeah you can check that with a free Microsoft tool, which we've covered in some of our previous videos. If you haven't watched those, I would suggest you go and watch them because I'm not going to repeat myself there. But basically, you are literally at a point now where you either upgrade to Windows 11 if you can, or you extend support for Windows 10 for one more year. But that is going to come around pretty quickly. And, you know, basically the end of Windows 10 is here. It's not going to go any further than one more year. I'm pretty sure of that. And remember, it's very unusual for Microsoft to even offer extended support or extended updates to home users. It's normally for businesses only. So whatever you decide, you have another year at least to uh, have a plan in action where you will have to either buy a new computer, use a different operating system like Linux or other ones available out there, or use Zero Patch or whatever it may be. It's pretty much that's it. You really shouldn't be using that operating system without security updates in another year's time if you've already enrolled. And before people start saying use Windows 10 IoT LTSE, it's an option that gives you long servicing. It's not really designed for home users. It is stuck on 21H2. 
And unfortunately, within the next one or two years, you're going to probably see issues with browsers and other software saying your operating system is not supported. You need to update your operating system. And of course, there won't be no updates because Windows 10 uh, IoT LTSE versions are stuck on 21H2, and that version has already reached end of life. So you're not going to have a, an enjoyable experience in a couple of more years on that version of Windows. And the reason why is because it was never really designed for home use, because those machines that are running that particular operating system don't install all of the software that you need for a daily uh, PC, like, for instance, Steam, Adobe software, and all these other software that you're going to be using as a home user, it's not going to be on those operating systems. And of course, it's just not going to be uh, supported in the near future. Windows 10 uh, LTSC ends in 2027. So you've got a couple of more years on that version. And that's probably going to be about the limit. Once you go beyond that, it's going to be really difficult to find games and software and other things to try and install without having issues. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below your plan of action and what you've done or what you plan to do in another year's time. If you're on the extended support program, let me know. I'll be interested to read your comments. Also, just to remind you that obviously the mainstream support for Windows 10 has definitely ended. So you are not going to be uh, using this for the foreseeable future. It's it's done. I think once the extended support ends in one year, I can't see Microsoft extending that any further. So start planning now for the end. Otherwise, you're going to leave yourself in a mad rush to try and sort something out when they pull the plug in a year's time. Anyway, that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video, or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.